there are those um, in our gathering. So, so you can see God has, has been growing our gathering. Um, there are people who have been hearing this message, and they say, I believe it. I believe that. And, and I want to confess publicly my belief in this gospel. And, and that's what Christ told, he gave us a commission. He says, go into the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I commanded. And so the, the call is to baptize and to teach. He, he gave us two sacraments in the church. One of them was baptism, and the other one is the Lord's Supper. Every week we, we uh, partake of the Lord's Supper. It's a reminder of Christ's death, his, his uh, broken body, his shed blood on the cross. And then as those who come into our fellowship start hearing the gospel and they start responding like, I love that Jesus that you're preaching about. I want to surrender to him as my Lord. We say, all right, let's, let's, bab- let's get baptized. And so I'm going to invite you at this time, uh, th- those who have committed to get baptized, uh, Fran, Krista, Chloe, Jackson, Jet, and Kenneth um, to the side over here. Uh, and we're going to make that happen. And what's going to happen is I'm going to ask them three questions. And if they can say yes to these three questions, we're going to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And and what's going to happen is as they come up out of the water, this is not like a sad, somber thing. This is a celebration. So I want us to encourage our brothers and our sisters. We're going to scream, shout, clap, do everything, like as if they won the Super Bowl. Why? Because there's a party in heaven every time someone repents and turns to Christ. And so a little bit about baptism as they're getting set up over here in the back. Blaine and Pastor Chris, I'm going to ask you guys to go in the back, everybody in their positions. Blaine and Pastor Chris. All right. So Pastor Chris, we, we have, um, Chris is going to be actually baptizing them. If anybody wants to come and, by the way, take pictures, totally do that. I'll stand out of the way. Um, one of the things that we do, the reason why we baptize, when, when Jesus came on the scene, and, and uh, you see John the Baptist, he's baptizing people. He already assumed that people knew what they were talking about, right? So I, I actually looked into this. Someone asked me, like, hey, in this class, if you want to be baptized, come on, make it happen. We're going to do this class. We're going to teach you all about baptism. And so they taught me about what baptism was. It was our public declaration of our inward decision to confess Christ as Lord. Uh, and then they said, hey, does any of you have questions? Do any of you have questions? And my question was, hey, in, in the New Testament, I looked up in the concordance, the first word or the first time baptism is, is used is in the New Testament. It wasn't in the Old Testament. And there was no, like, dictionary definition, like, what is baptism? And so I said, where did baptism come from, and how come they all knew what John the Baptist was doing? And the guy who was doing the class was like, I don't know. That's a really good question. And, and so I was like, well, you know, I'm going to be baptized anyway because I, I believe it's uh, my call to be obedient. I studied it later, and what I found was this. In the Old Testament, uh, God had called the, the children of Israel to have ceremonial washings. There were these washings. Everything that was unclean would become clean through a washing. And, and so if there was an outsider who was not affiliated with the people of God, and they wanted to now be affiliated with the people of God, they would have to be cleansed. And they would go through the waters of what was called mikvah, the waters of mikvah. That's baptism. Now, what was really crazy is that when, when John the Baptist comes on the scene, he gets all of the attention of these Pharisees and these religious people because he's not baptizing outsiders, he's baptizing Jews. And what he was saying was, we have gone so far away from the God of Israel that we actually need to identify with him again. We need to be washed and cleansed and identify with the God of Israel. And so John the Baptist starts baptizing Jews. And then Jesus says, well, I am going to be baptized by you to fulfill all righteousness. And so Jesus himself identifies with that message. And then when Jesus, he, he dies, he rises from the dead. Before he goes into heaven, he commissions the church. Now I want you to do this. I want you to baptize people. Why? Because people who are unclean and they want to identify with the God of Israel, the Yahweh, he says, this is, they're going to identify me, identify with me in my death my burial, and my resurrection. And so when you go under the water, this is as if you're saying, I'm dying to myself. And when you come up out of the water, you're being raised to life with Christ. And so this is a really significant uh, decision in the life of the believer. I'm going to read one passage, and I'm going to ask each of our people 
a few questions, but this passage in 1 Peter 3, he says, baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. So, so a lot of de- denominations, they believe that, like, you have to be baptized or else you're going to hell because of this. He says it saves you. But, but he continues, he says, not as the removal of dirt from the body. So it's not just this physical act. There's nothing magical in the water and, and in this moment. He says it's not the removal of dirt from the body, but it's a pledge of a good conscience towards God. And so what is significant about this is your pledge, what's going on inside of your heart. And so this isn't like, okay, I need to be baptized, and then if I backslide later on, or if I sin or something, I need to get rebaptized. No, 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 no. This is the moment to where you're saying, I am forsaking my old ways. I'm following after Christ. I'm identifying with Christ in his death by dying to myself. I'm identifying with Christ in his life by being raised to new life. And this is their declaration before not only God, but also us as a church, because we can hold each other accountable and say, hey, I remember the day you were baptized. And, and before church, I gave every single one of these people a warning because this is an exciting time. This is a joyful time. But it's also the time to where you're saying, I surrender to the Lord. And the moment you do that, you put a big red target on your back because the enemy hates a surrendered person. He knows what a surrendered heart can do against the, the kingdom of darkness, and he will come after you. This isn't to scare you and to be like, okay, well, I don't want to follow Christ because the word says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So this isn't to scare us, but this is for you to understand what counting the cost actually looks like. Yeah. There's been several times where I've baptized someone and the very next day, the very next week, something happens in a temptation, a distraction, or some sort of attack from the enemy. And I tell them, like, hey, you have to be aware that there is a spiritual battle going on, not just in the physical. It's not these physical things that are just happen- happening by random chance. There is a spiritual battle going on. And so this moment that we're, we're having right now to baptize our brothers and our sisters, this is a joyful time. This is a time where they need us as the church to rally around them. So I'm going to ask Fran to come up first. And guys, encourage Fran as she's coming. that he died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead? Friend, do you trust in his sacrifice for your salvation and do you vow to live for him whatever the cost? Well, then by your own confession, we'll baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. church transfer growth. This is Johnny and Donna A in their normal lives with their mortgage broker saying, hey, can you come to church with us? And, and that's how Fran ended up getting baptized today. Well, today we also have Krista and her whole family, a beautiful family. You see them um, just worshiping Jesus every Sunday that they're here just on their knees. You know when you see this family that they love the Lord. And as I was talking to Krista and, and her and her family, her kids, they um, they all said, we, we're ready to do this. We want to do this not only as our profession of faith before God, but also before the church. And so as we do this, Krista, I'm going to ask you three questions. Do you confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life? Do you believe that he, he, he died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead? Krista, do you trust in the sacrifice of Jesus for your salvation and not just trusting him in a way that you believe it with your head, but do you vow to live for him whatever the cost? Well, by your own confession, Krista, 
Pastor Chris is going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. give to go back in time and like do it right as a young person Chloe I, I see you every Sunday worshiping the Lord and I'm like man God has done a work in her life Chloe do you confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life do you believe that he died for your sins and that God rose him from the grave and do you trust in Jesus' sacrifice for your sins and promise to live for him whatever the cost? Well, I want you to turn to Pastor Chris and by your own confession, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. sacrifice for your salvation and vow to live for him whatever the cost well, by your own confession then we baptize you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit My oldest son's name is Jet, and this is the only other Jet that I've ever met. When he said, my name is Jet, I was like, no, it is not. <laughs> Again, this beautiful family, they, the Lord brought them to our gathering, and I'm just so grateful for the work that he's doing in your life, Jet, and for the heart that you have to worship him. And so, Jet, you heard the questions, and I want you to personalize them. I don't want this to just be a, uh, a moment that we're, we're just doing this, just caught up in the, in, in the hype, you know. This has to be your decision, and, and I believe that it is. Jet, do you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord of your life? Yes. Amen. <laughs> do you believe that he died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead? Yes. Do you trust in Jesus' sacrifice for your salvation, and do you vow to live for him whatever it might cost you? Yes. Amen. Well, by your own confession, Jet, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Aside from just that, all of the points that I, w- I wished all of y'all amen to, he was like, amen. Like, yeah, man, he was preaching back to me. <laughs> Afterwards, he was really resonating with the word, and I could just tell Ken that God is doing something in your life, man. I, I don't know you well. Blaine has told me that you're one of his best friends from growing up, that he's known you for a minute, and that God has been doing a work in your life, bro, and it's our pleasure to, to baptize you today, man. And I don't know what God's doing in your life or what he has planned for you, for sure. I wanted to read this passage though in Ephesians 6. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Can put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then, Ken, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take up the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit which is the word of God so can I ask you to turn around and I'm asked those same questions to you Ken do you confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life yes. do you believe that he died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead yes. and do you trust in his sacrifice for your salvation and promise to live for him whatever it might cost you yes, I do. Well, by your own confession brother I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.